Now we are going to see about another type of oscillations called as limit cycle oscillation. So limit cycle oscillation. Oscillations will be there and how to limit that cycle of oscillation. So there are two types of limit cycle oscillation. One is zero input limit cycle oscillation and overflow limit cycle oscillation. So what do you mean by zero input limit cycle oscillation? For this I can give you a very good example. You have seen a ZRO. When you are connecting, you are plugging it to the uh, and giving a current to it. Only the current you are giving. You are not giving any input. You can see the DC line of the ZRO gets flickered between a positive and negative value for some times. Isn't it? And after some times it will come to the cons. It will be in a constant term. So that is called as zero. No input is given, but your output is varying. So that is called zero input limit cycle oscillation. So you have to find out at what time the oscillation gets stopped. Okay, that is zero input limit cycle oscillation. Or if you want to find the time that you are stopping that, you can find it using a dead band. That will go through. Next, overflow limit cycle oscillation. What happens if you are you have you know you are in digital uh, signal processing you are using more delays as well as adders are there okay so you can reduce the delays using a direct two method but the adders will be the same so when you are adding the two numbers it will go overflow it will go out of the limit so how you can uh, bring it back to this uh, term is called as overflow limit cycle oscillation there are two methods in overflow limit cycle oscillation one is saturation arithmetic and another one is scaling here we are going for scaling method only okay so what first we can see what you mean by a zero input limit cycle oscillation here it is given that consider the system y of n is equal to 1 by 2 y of n minus 1 plus x of n and consider the input signal and the input is x of n is equal to 7 by 8 n is equal to 0 when n is equal to 0 x of n is 7 by 8 and 0 otherwise round off to 3 bits excluding the sine bit okay here we are giving the columns over here it is given as you have n is 0 x of n is there and your output y of n is equal to 1 by 2 uh, y of n minus 1 plus x of n and your quantized output q is equal to 1 by 2 y of n minus 1 plus x of n. Here what you are finding is you have to find whenever it gets stopped. Whenever without giving any input when the value gets stopped. Okay. So when n is equal to 0 it is given x of n is 7 by 8. And y of n is equal to uh, 1 by 2 y of n minus 1. Your previous n minus 1 is there. So you don't have a minus 1 value so it will be 0. Plus x of n x of n is given as 7 by 8 okay so you will get 7 by 8 when you're getting the value it is 0 0.875 and the con binary value when you're finding the binary of 0 0.875 you will get is 0 0.1110 0. rounding to 3 bit you're rounding your next bit is 0 so you're rounding to 3 bit you will get again 7 by 8 okay in the next term your value you have to find until when the data gets stopped okay so when n is equal to 1 here it is it x of n will be 0 so 1 by 2 here the previous n was 0 value y of uh, 0 sorry uh, your n n is 1 so 1 minus 1 you will get 0 plus 0 so y of 0 you got your y of 0 value you got 7 by 8 so uh, y of 0 is 7 by 8 into 1 by 2 you will get 0 point you don't have x of n so 0 0.4375 finding the binary value you will get 0 0.01110 until you have to find 5 if it is given 3 over here you have to find 5 values minimum 5 values then only you can do your rounding over here so it is given 0 0.011 here it is a higher number so you have to add that number to this you will get 0 0.100 so what is 0 0.101 by 2 again you have giving it to the n is equal to 2 at that time x of n is 0 y of n is equal to here 2 minus 1 you will get 1 so the previous value y of n 1 by 2 okay 
1 by 2 into 1 by 2 will get 1 by 4. That is 0 0.010. Here you are truncating to 3, uh, rounding to 3 bits. You will get only 0 0.10. So that is 1 by 4. Again you are giving n is equal to 3. x of n is 0. 1 by 2 into y of 2. y of 2 is 1 by 4. 1 by 4 into 1 by 2. 1 by 8. 0 0.001. That is 1 by 8. Again you have going for the next value. 4. 1 by 2. y of 3. y of 3 got 1 by 8. 1 by 8 into 1 by 2. 1 by 16. You are truncating. You get 0 0.0001. You are rounding it, sorry not truncating, you are rounding it, you will get 0 0.001, that is 1 by 8. Again, once again you are going, you will get again 16 and that will be again 1 by 8, 1 by 8, 1 by into 1 by 2, 1 by 6. So, you can see from here onwards it gets constant value, 1 by 8. Okay, till that time your output, without giving any input, your output is, has been varying. It is a minute value only. But your output is varying. So you can find this using a dead band. Okay. That is equal to plus or minus of 2 raised to minus B divided by 1 minus modulus of A. A is the input value that your Y of N value. Okay. So 2 raised to here it is given that excluding sign bit. Here the B value you have to include the sign bit. So if it is 3 you have to give 4. If it is 4, you have to give 5. So, you have to include the sign bit value divided by 1 minus modulus of 1 by 2. Uh, doing this, you will get the value 0 0.125 that is equal to 1, 1 by 8. That is the constant value that you got. Okay. So, a question is given in overflow limit cycle oscillation. So that is, x of n and y of n is given. A1 and A2 are the two adders. I told you in overflow limit cycle oscillation what is happening the arithmetic or the avenue adding you have seen in direct two method your delay will be reduced but your adders are same so when you are giving more and more adders there will be an overflow in the system so to reduce that overflow you have to do uh, you have to find the scaling factor so s0 is a scaling factor that you are substituting over here so Due to this scaling factor, it will reduce the layer or it will limit the overflow in this circuit. Okay. So, before adder, you have to submit a uh, scaling factor. So, S0 is given as the scaling factor. Now, you have to find H of Z. How you can find H of Z? Either you can go in your uh, linear manner or you can directly, if you know, you can directly write H of Z is equal to Y of Z by x of z in direct two form you know y of z is the uh, numerator part that will be uh, direct to the y of z term so this is y of z term that you will get uh, that is equal to 1 plus 0 0.259 is z inverse isn't it in direct two form y of z by w of z you are writing the numerator term so you will get the numerator term as this this will be the numerator term and this is the denominator term. So, divided by 1 minus 0 0.509 is said inverse. Okay. So, before that you have to substitute one S0. So, over here you are substituting an S0. That's what you are getting over here. S0 into 1 plus 0 0.259 uh, is said inverse divided by 1 minus 0 0.509. Uh, 509 is it also. otherwise you can go through the flow itself you can go and find the value also okay next you have to find the residue of the s scaling factor s0 so s0 square is equal to 1 divided by this is the circular integral so instead of the circular integral you can find the residue value that we found in product condensation error you know h of z h of z inverse like that we found no so you can find it using the residue value. This is the circular integral part. Instead of going for this, you can go do this. Okay. So, to find S0 divided by 1 minus, you should take the W of Z by X of Z term. S0 divided by denominator term only. Okay. And substitute S of 0, S0 is equal to 1. In all terms, you are just substituting S0 is equal to 1. And then you have to find S of Z. 
s of z is nothing but z divided by how 1 by z you will get over here 1 by z when you are multiplying you will get z minus 0.509 divided by z and taking that z in the top you will get z divided by z minus 509 where you are giving s0 as 1 ok and when you are giving the uh, scaling factor or oh, when you are substituting the is inverse over there so s inverse is equal to z inverse divided by z inverse minus 0 0.509 now what you have to do you have to find the residue so residue is equal to z divided by z minus 0 0.509 into z inverse divided by z inverse minus 0 0.509 into z inverse now you can see z is equal to 0 0.509 which is inside the unit circle and z inverse 1 by uh, 0 0.509 will give you the value outside the unit circle ok so you can take z is equal to 0 0.509 that is one pole ok that means it is inside the unit circle so can cancelling this you will get z inverse divided by the two terms ok and in that term one will be cancelled and you will get z inverse minus 0 0.509 where you are substituting z is equal to that means 0 here you are getting 0 0.509 inverse divided by 0 0.509 inverse minus 0 0.509 ok that is equal to 1.35 so you got S0 value is equal to S0 square value is equal to 1 divided by this is denominator term isn't it here it was given as the denominator term S0 is equal to square is equal to 1 divided by the residue so you found the residue that is S0 square is equal to 1 divided by the value and to find the S0 value you have to take the root of that answer and you will get that is equal to 0 0.808606 you are just substituting the value in the numerator where you gave has given us you got the value as here you got you got the value as S0 into 1 plus 0 0.259 Z inverse divided by 1 minus 0 0.509 Z inverse ok if over here you are substituting this value ok then you will get the answer so I have given 2 or 3 questions over here you can just work it off this is the same thing for the function it is given so you just you have to draw the graph in the previous section itself as a graph has been shown you have to so this this will be in your y, y of phi z term this will be your x of phi z term and you have to substitute your s naught ok you have to show the signal flow graph this is called the signal flow graph like this you have to draw this and you have to substitute an s0 in the beginning and then you have to find the residue value but you have to find the value of s0 and the question is given over here here you will have one adder here also one adder so a1 and a2 you can substitute your s0 over here ok the same method you can work with this off ok and uh, according to the product quantization error I forgot to give you some question this is the product quantization output round of noise indirect from realization you can go through this problem also you can work it off and this is your uh, equation that you are giving for uh, to find an another for output noise for this also uh, product quantization error can go through these two questions also ok hope you understood how to find your scaling factor it is important you just go through if you have any doubt just let me know thank you